welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Emma and this is Emma's Cottage. If you guys have seen my channel before, you know this is not my typical scenery. We're usually inside in my studio. However, I wanted to try something new today. I live in the Pacific Northwest and when it rains, it rains for a very long time. And I typically bleach in the summertime outside. Well, when it rains and I don't have a ton of sunlight, I need to come up with an alternative way of bleaching during the winter months. So in today's video, I am going to try a few different things, a few different lights that I've bought and be able to show you guys or tell you guys what works and what doesn't work. So if this sounds like fun to you, then tag along. Okay, so what am I gonna use in today's video? I've got two different sets of lights that I purchased. The first one I purchased off of Amazon. It's called the LED Grow Lights. Now, everything that you guys see me using today in today's video, I will have linked in the description below. So this is what the box looks like. And it comes with a few different um, options. So this one comes with four different lights. I've seen people use this um, and supposedly it works well, so I wanted to try it. And usually um, what, what I've heard is that they'll place like four different shirts under each light. They definitely move. So if you if you had two tables maybe back to back, I could see how having four different shirts would totally work. So we're gonna be using that on two of the shirts today to see if it works or not. And then the other light that I got, we just went to Home Depot and we just got, you can see back there, I'm pointing totally opposite, but in the video I'm pointing to it. <laughs> so we got that light and it's a heat light. And this is the light bulb that we got. So you had to buy them separate. So the little metal casing came by itself and then you buy this heat lamp separately. And we're gonna try that because this is giving off heat. I believe this also gives off some heat, but it's more of like a light that's gonna help your plants grow. I don't know you guys, we'll see, right? And then I'm gonna do another one with nothing. No light, no heat, just the garage. And right now, Honestly, I have no idea what the temperature is, but it is kind of chilly. Um, it's been raining all day. It's nighttime. Like we're probably getting close to eight o'clock at night. So it's cold. Um, and I'm just super curious if I could still bleach with nothing at this time of night with no sun, with no heat. I'm curious. What else are we gonna need? So I'm going to be using my mist spray bottle. Again, I will have all of this in the links below. I got this off of Amazon. I use this to spray my shirts. And then I got this glass container. It's just like a little jar that you would put food in. And then I've got two paint brushes. Um, I use the smaller one to get my details around the edge of my print. And then I use the bigger one just to kind of get the inside. Oh, we're gonna be making this shirt today, you guys. Isn't it cute? Ah, I love it, so exciting. And then hydrogen peroxide. I'm gonna have this on hand just in case we get too bright or too light of a white and I need it to slow down if some of my shirts are going faster than others, I can use this to slow down the bleaching process. And then of course, as soon as we do the image center part, if you guys have watched my videos before, I use cardboard boxes over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So I'm gonna be using these for the middle of my shirt so that this center image doesn't bleed through to the back because that would look silly, right? Um, and then of course the bleach. This is the type of bleach that I always use. I do not like the no splash formula. I've mentioned that in a few of my other videos. You guys can use what you want, but the no splash formula to me is too thick. So I don't use that. And then last but not least, um, I've been starting to cut out templates. So instead of bringing my image outside, um, you know, and exposing it to the elements or possibly getting bleach on it, what I do instead is I just make templates that I can use over and over again. So like this one's a small, that one's a medium, large, right? And then I can save these for future shirts. So that's kind of cool. So again, that should be everything you guys are gonna need if you're gonna follow along with me today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, one thing that I forgot to mention that you're going to need, of course, is the shirts. So the shirts that we're using today and they're honestly my shirts of choice for bleaching is the Gildan 6400 or 64,000. It depends on the website that you purchase them from. Um, I purchased from clothing short, clothingshoponline.com and on that website, I believe they're 64,000. I also purchased from jiffyshirts.com and on that website, I think they're 6400. So as long as it's a 640, follow the zeros, that's the line that I use. Very important, it has to be the Heather colors. So it needs to say Heather before the shirt. So this is a Heather military green it's gonna bleach. 
The other shirts that don't have Heather in the name, they're not gonna be 65% polyester, 35% cotton. So um, as long as you're getting the Heather colors in the Gildan 6400, then they're going to work really well for your sublimation prints and processes. So uh, I went ahead and I filled up the bleach. So most of you guys know that I always empty these out after every single use um, because it definitely is gonna help your spray bottles last a lot longer. So I went ahead and filled those all up so that they're ready to go. And the last thing that I wanna do, you can see I have my other three shirts prepared and ready, but I wanted to show you guys how I do this technique. There's lots of different ways, and honestly, there's no right way or no wrong way as long as you get the result that you're looking for. So I see people, it's like the accordion style. I see people start from the bottom like this and kind of just work their way up, right? You can definitely do it that way. I find myself taking it all the way to the armpits and then just folding it, folding it back and forth like that. That's kind of how I do it. Like so. So then once I get that, then I'm gonna grab the whole shirt. I'm gonna kind of fold it up, including the sleeve, and then lay it back down. And then I do it one more final time. There we go, just like that. So now let's, what I think what I'm gonna do is spray them all, right, just like this. Then I'm gonna turn on the lights. has been um, sprayed. So then I immediately, this is probably something different than most of the other people you guys follow. I immediately turn over and do the other side. I don't wait in between because I like both of the sides to process equally. So all I do is I'm gonna flip it because this is the back side now. So I just flip it and now I'm gonna do the back side of the shirt. on both sides. That's one thing about this method, when you're doing this accordion style or stripe style, whatever you want to call it, it's actually really easy to be able to flip your shirt without having to unravel it. Because you just flip it on the side and then do it. I'm just trying to clean up some of this excess bleach so that I can lay it flat. A few things to point out while I'm doing this. Bleach can be dangerous. Make sure that you are being very careful that you're in a very well ventilated area. I have a very big garage, AKA my husband's woodworking shop, which by the way, did you guys notice my cabinets? So these are going to be going into my studio because I'm working on in the last few weeks. And I'm really hoping they'll be ready next week. I cannot wait. Um, so yes, make sure you're being careful. Make sure that you are in a well ventilated area because breathing in wood bleach is not a good thing. So if you don't have a great area with good ventilation, wear a mask. I probably should be wearing a mask right now, um, but it's not too bad. Like I don't, I sometimes will actually breathe it in more outside. Like if it's windy and it comes up in my face, I definitely will wear glasses and masks. So make sure that you guys are using common sense and being careful. Um, I will point out, they are all bleaching really well right now with no lights on. And I did, I did check the temperature and we're at about 50 degrees. That's cold to me, you guys. <laughs> Sorry, but it is. Um, it doesn't get super cold here in the Pacific Northwest, but 50 degrees, like 48, 49, like that is cold for me. So that's where we're at, is we're about 50 degrees right now and they are still bleaching, so not too bad. But I'm gonna now turn on the lights, I'm gonna undo them, lay them flat, and I'm gonna start working on the inside of the shirt. Let me do one of them really quick. Let's open this one up so you can see how that looked, right? It's kind of a cool print, huh? Kind of fun, something different. We're gonna lay it flat. That's why I wiped up the bleach because I don't want any crazy weird bleach marks on the shirt. I'm going to get one of my cardboard boxes that I cut out. I'm gonna very carefully shove it up the shirt. And then you can either get a measuring tape or eyeball it. I've gotten pretty good at eyeballing lately. 
This one's a medium, so I'm gonna find my medium template, which is right here. I feel like I did those backwards. I'm gonna go check, I'll be right back. I'm so glad I checked because I did, when I traced this image, I traced it like that, which means when I go to print it, it's gonna be the other way, so I need to make sure I lay my template down in the direction it should be in. Get that away from my glitch. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and prep all the shirts like that and then I'll get started um, with the lights and painting the center image. quite connect like maybe like right here I'm missing a spot which honestly that's fine that's art to me kind of what's what makes each shirt a little different but if it's driving you bonkers just get your paintbrush and finish that line okay let's turn on the lights but I will say they're processing like I have no heat right now it's 50 degrees in here um, typically when I bleach outside it's like 80 to 100 and at 50 they're still bleaching definitely much slower than they would outside but I kind of like it a little because I feel like I'm always so rushed and I'm not as rushed right now like I kind of was able to take my time and relax and one thing I was thinking about while I was doing that is my husband's cheer this really does take a toll on your back oh man look at that Totally going to do that next time. <laughs> All right, let's turn the lights. So that's that heat lamp from Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you guys have, whatever you have in your town. And then this one is the one from Amazon. And I think it's the red that's like going to be the warmest. So let's try the red light and see what happens. We'll put two on that shirt, two on this one. We're, I mean, I have no idea, I have no idea, you guys. And then we'll compare it to one that has nothing and we'll see if they truly do get lighter than another. All right, you guys, I think we're done. Um, my findings, which I need to hurry and explain this part so I can take them inside and hurry and wash them. But my findings are, at least with this color, they did fine without any heat source at around 50 degrees in my garage. They bleached just fine. Um, I will say the heat lamp was probably, like this one is definitely more white than these ones. Um, these ones are fine. I think it definitely helped speed up the process. They weren't warm or hot like this was. Um, I would say the hard part about these is because of the color in them, it was hard for me to tell if it was changing color or not because they were like red or blue color. So 
This one definitely has like a yellow tint to it, but it was more of a light and I could see it changing. This one has had nothing on it and it's very similar to these shirts. Now, are these worth it? I think so. Like, I think if it got pretty cold, if we got to like 30 degrees, I think it would really slow down this bleaching process and having some heat sources such as this heat lamp or these would probably help. But in today's video, I feel like they all worked without a heat source or without a blow dryer or without a heat gun. Like they worked well. Um, but I will say out of everything in here, the nothing and then these lights, I will say that this one worked the best. Um, and if I were to move forward with doing a lot of shirts in the wintertime, I probably would buy a few more of these lights. Um, one thing I just realized I didn't show you is the way this light comes, just like this on a cord, okay? The way I had it set up is with a tripod, and I will have this linked below as well. I used to use this for my videos when I was filming, but I now have this new one that you guys can't see that has a big circular light that helps light up when I'm filming. So I just used this tripod for filming. Um, I want to say it was a really good price, like 20 bucks is really cheap. And then I just connected it like that. So I think if I were to do this at, again, a, a, a much less, you know, much colder degrees, I probably would use the heat lamp versus these, even though they worked, it was just hard to see what color they were turning. Um, and it wasn't very expensive. I want to say the casing for that light was around 10 and I feel like the light itself was about 10. So if you had to purchase, you know, maybe four of those, if you're doing four shirts at a time, totally could. And then again, I kind of like the fact that I can roll around as I'm spraying these and I don't have to hurt my back. So anyways, I'm going to go inside. I'm going to wash these. Um, the way I wash, just in case you're curious, is I have a big sink upstairs in my laundry room. So I just go in, I put them in the sink, I spray them down with cold water. I get Dawn dish soap. It's just what I do. It's worked for me thus far. I get Dawn dish soap and I just suds them up really good and just sit here and suds and suds and suds, all of them. Um, you can definitely spray hydrogen peroxide on them at this point. That helps slow down the bleaching process um, as well as like stop it altogether. So I do this on my, all of my shirts. Now that I'm gonna go inside and wash them, I'm just gonna spray a little light mist on them. And you can do that front and back. Take them inside, wash them with the Dawn dish soap, get all of the soap out, like rinse them really well with water until they don't have any more suds. Then I throw them in the wash and I always use a very light detergent. Um, I think it's called All Free and Clear is what I use. And I use that because I don't want my customers to get a rash due to the detergent that I use to wash them. Then I dry them at regular heat or low heat, whatever your dryer settings are. I don't do high heat. And the reason for that is because I don't want a chance of them shrinking. So I'm gonna do all of that tonight. I'm not gonna have that on video because I just explained it to you. And then tomorrow I'm gonna wake up. I'm all a little different. Um, it's just getting late. I don't wanna have to do it tonight. And we'll go ahead and we'll press the images on the front so that you can see how it all turned out. Um, before I forget, just in case I do, this was a small, this was the medium, this was the large, and this one was the extra large. So the small medium had the plant lights, the large had no light, and then the extra large is the one that had the heat lamp from Home Depot. So, okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Hi, good morning. It's the next day. The shirts are all fully washed and dried. And I've got some surprising developments that I've never had happen before. And the only thing I can think of is the elements that I was bleaching in. Uh, I have a hypothesis, but I very well could be wrong. So you guys watched me do the whole thing. If you saw me mess up somewhere, put it in the comments below so I can figure out what on earth went wrong compared to what I do outside. I don't know. Um, the extra large shirt, as you guys remember, is the one that had the heat lamp and it turned out so funky. It looked fine inside the garage. Um, I went in and I washed it. I washed all of them together. Um, like I always do nothing, nothing that I did yesterday, not any of the, my whole process, everything was the same. It was just that we were inside of a cold garage with heat lamps. Um, but this extra large turned out somewhat interesting. Look at the back. Isn't that strange? That is so strange. Now I had a piece of cardboard. So it is not the front that was bleaching through the back. I was thinking, okay, could it have been the hydrogen peroxide? 
but I didn't spray hydrogen peroxide on the back. I only sprayed it on the front. Um, you know, you guys saw me, I did the accordion style. I wiped up the bleach. I always do that. I do that outside. So my hypothesis, and it very well could be wrong, is that having it outside with the heat and the sun, it's going to help evaporate that bleach. And me wiping it down, it didn't take it off completely. I should have had like water in a washcloth versus just a regular uh, a dry paper towel, which is what I normally use. Um, and that the bleach didn't evaporate like it normally does out in the sun. And so when I laid these shirts flat on the surface, that bleach still was activating and continued bleaching these shirts. Again, never has happened to me outside. So that's something that I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have to just really watch for, um, that that bleach isn't evaporating and that it's still going to bleach my shirts. Now the extra large definitely had the most, like the weirdest look on it. The only other thing I can think of is that this one had the heat lamp and just having the heat lamp mostly on the upper side of the shirt. If you guys saw that from the video, it wasn't really the lower side. And if you look at the lower side, the lower side's fine. It's just that top, which is so, so weird. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I am still going to try and save these shirts. If this is art. This is where instead of panicking and, oh my gosh, I just ruined a shirt. This is where you need to get creative and say, how can I fix this? Um, what can I do to still make this a beautiful artistic shirt? So what I've decided that I'm going to try and do is still go ahead and put the image on it, but then I'm going to get some black um, spray paint or I'm using acrylic paint and water. Um, you could use the SEI dyes, however you want to do it. And I'm going to try and just do some, um, some speckles of black all over the shirt and I'm hoping that that might help try and blend in some of this. It might not, like it might be a total loss, but I still want to try it. I still want to try and save it, right? So anyways, there's the extra large. Definitely something weird going on. You guys never happened to me before. This one is the small. So this one was underneath one of the plant lights. Did it a little bit on the back too. Isn't that weird? Like it's so weird that it's on the back and not even really on the front. I don't know. Again, I think it's just because the bleach didn't evaporate like normal and I should have wiped it more up when I laid them flat. Never have I ever had to do that outside. Here's the medium. This one also had a plant light. Did the same thing. So weird. And then this one is the large. This is the one that didn't have any lights. And the funny thing is this, this one definitely had it a little bit on the back, but nothing like the other ones. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to play with it a little bit more. But as of right now, they did not turn out like they typically do when I'm bleaching outside. So I have to figure it out. I'm going to have to do it some more. Um, make sure you guys follow us on our Facebook group, which is Emma's Cottage DIY on Facebook. I will absolutely keep trying this and I will absolutely update everybody in the Facebook group on, um, on the results, on what I can try and what I'm going to do differently. But let's go ahead and just try and finish these, try and salvage them and see what we think. They might be a total loss, but... I take that back. Nothing's ever a total loss. You know what? Mistakes are just proof that you're trying. And even if I lost out on these four shirts, at least none of these are for customers. And this was a good opportunity for me to try. And again, mistakes are just proof that I'm trying and I'm going to keep trying until I get it right. We're almost to temperature. So I'm just going to hurry and press these really quick to get any moisture that's left in them out. So whenever you're doing sublimation, you definitely want to get any of that moisture out of the shirt before you press. Um, when you do sublimation, it's usually 400 degrees for 60 seconds. So when you pre-press, you want to do it for about five to 10 seconds. My press is not quite at temperature yet. We're only at about 300 degrees. So because of that, I'm going to just pre-press a little bit longer than 10 seconds, just to make sure again, that I'm getting all of that extra moisture out of the shirt. I like to stick parchment paper in between the shirt. This is going to prevent it. It's like a blowout paper so that the ink doesn't go through the shirt to the back of the shirt. You can use butcher paper. You can use parchment paper. I use both. Honestly, it just depends on my mood. I will say though, the parchment paper seems to be easier for the middle of the shirt just because it's slipperier and it just slips right on in.
And I forgot on those other two, so I'll make sure I do it on these ones. You should be lint rolling these before you press, even before you pre-press. One thing to mention while we're over here at the press, you will notice that I do have Teflon paper on the top and on the bottom. I'm sure you've probably heard before, and if you haven't, you will. You shouldn't use Teflon when you're supplementing because Teflon can actually trap in moisture. I use Teflon to protect my press. There's been too many close calls or actually accidents where I have pressed my image onto my mat. And if you do that, you've now could press that onto your next shirt. So I use these to protect my press. So the way I get around trapping the moisture is I make sure that I use a piece of butcher paper in between the Teflon paper and my shirt. That I have found has helped. I haven't had any issues with the way my shirt has turned out. I'm sure there's probably people out there like, Emma, don't do it. But I'm just telling you, like, I'm honest, you guys. If, if I had issues with it, if I felt like it wasn't working, I wouldn't show you guys. Like, it works for me. I haven't had any issues. But what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't do the sublimation by itself without butcher paper. I always, always use a butcher paper on top of the shirt, parchment paper in between. You could do parchment paper, parchment paper, or butcher paper, butcher paper. I just prefer to do parchment in between, butcher paper on top. You can also even do butcher paper on bottom. Totally up to you. Um, just keep in mind that the top sheet, as long as you're pressing an image, you never want to reuse because that image is now on this sheet. And if you go and use it on the next shirt, that image is going to come off of this sheet and go on to your next shirt. So I was reusing this as I pre-pressed because there was no ink. This is just straight shirt. So we are now at temperature. I've got these in order from small to large. So my images should also be in order from small to large. Just double checking. Oh, that one's my small, medium, large, extra large. Okay. Let's go ahead and get pressing. Sometimes for me to like visualize the image better, because sometimes you get these sheets that are kind of thick, I will like cut around the image. Um, now keep in mind, I do usually tell you guys to tear, but I know that I'm gonna be throwing these back in the dryer, so those press marks are gonna pop back out, so I'm totally fine with cutting it. That looks good. I don't know if you guys noticed my new tape dispenser. I'm obsessed with it. It um, cuts the tape for you. So you just turn it like this, okay, cool. and all these pieces of tape come out, look at that, and they're pre-cut. Oh, I'm in love. So cool. I'll make sure I have that in the link, sorry, in the description below, so if you're interested, I'll have a link for it. Covering up the shirt, I usually do medium pressure, medium to heavy pressure when I sublimate. Um, again, 400 degrees for 60 seconds. My heat press's sweet spot is about 395 for 60 seconds. So you guys kind of just have to figure out what your heat press's sweet spot is. Um, I always encourage everyone to get yourself a heat gun. They're usually like 20 bucks. In fact, I'll, I'll find one and I'll put it in the link below. They're anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks. You probably could even get one cheaper, but then, you know, you're going to get what you pay for and you want to make sure that it's actually working correctly and reading correctly. But all you do is you simply, um, point it at the four corners and then the center of your heat press to make sure that it's heating up correctly. Um, and keep in mind that on the edges of your heat press, it's always going to be a few degrees lighter than like the center. So, but it's a good idea just to kind of see mine runs hot. So even though this is about 395, when I checked it with the heat gun, it was around 400. And so that's why I always go like five degrees less. Okay. As a reminder, this now has an image on it. So we don't want to reuse it, so I recycle it. Looks good. There we go, there's the small. Isn't it just so cute? I love it. And I think with the little paint splatters, it actually might be adorable. 
We'll see. Thing I wanted to show you guys really quick. I've done this before. We'll see if it works out again. Um, my printer had a little bit of a hiccup and I don't know why. Hopefully you guys can see. See those marks right there? I call them skid marks. <laughs> oh, I have another image. Where is it? Right here. Here's one I haven't fixed yet. And my printer just does this every once in a while. I think it's one of my rollers. The, the rubber part of it is catching on to the print. So what I've done in the past and I've actually seen that it works and it's my workaround is I get my black infusible ink marker and then I just fill in those spots that it did it on. And I've done it before and it's worked. And I mean, obviously this isn't gonna work if you don't have the colors that, that it did it to, but if it's this straight black, it worked for me. And I, I wasn't even able to tell last time. So we'll see on this image if we were able to tell. I did some of this yesterday and now I'm just gonna do a second coat. So you can see there how I kind of filled in those blanks. Now, if this was like a multicolored image, that hack wouldn't work. But because it's just black and I had a black infusible ink marker, it can't just be a regular marker. Those are infusible inks. It's the same thing as sublimation ink for the most part. Um, it does the same thing. And it works. So there's our large. Large turned out great. Now again, keep in mind, these are only 65% poly. So you're gonna have that faded vintage look. If this was 100% poly, that black would be very bright and vibrant. And while we're waiting for this one, um, I can show you what my plan is for doing the speckles. Now, typically I would do like a spray, but I want to make sure that it's like a like a flick of color, not like when I spray with those spritzes, it's more of like a, a full on mist and I don't want to mist. I just want to spritz. Those are my terms. <laughs> um, what I did is I'm using a similar bottle as we did with the bleach and I filled it about halfway. So I um, found that I like more water than paint and then I'm just going to put some of this black in here. Too cool. So. Let me show you what it looks like after I pressed. You definitely see what we did there. Now let's see on this shirt if it worked. And it did. See, I'm telling you guys, tips and tricks from Emma. Look at that, you can't even tell. Cannot even tell even a little bit where those smudge marks were. So the infusible ink in a similar or exact same color totally works if you have a mess up on your sheets. Okay. I am done with the heat press because the rest of this process is going to be done in the dryer. So you saw me start putting this in. I think I'm gonna mix it with my smaller one. So what I've done in some past videos, nothing on YouTube, but within our Facebook group, I tried a few things with acrylic paint and water. Um, and the one that I did I did 50% uh, water, 50% acrylic paint, and that shirt came out super crispy, like <laughs> very crispy, even after washing it a few times. So I've heard people mixing with alcohol. I'm adding a little bit of alcohol in there to kind of, um, I think, break up the paint so that it's not so crispy. But then I've also heard people trying to just add more water. Instead of doing 50-50, they've done like 75% water, 25% paint. So at this point, that's exactly what I've done. Is I've started adding in more water to my paints now. Um, and it's just the way I look at it is I can tell based on the consistency on if there's too much water or if there's not enough water. So I definitely want it to drip like that. I'm pretty, I think I'm right at the consistency that I want to be at. So see that still drips. That's about how I like mine. All right, I'm going to go get some gloves. I'm going to prepare the table. Um, cause I'm going to put some paper down so that I can spritz it with some gloved hands. See how it turns out. Okay. So 
we've got the table of prepared. This is just um, packaging paper that I bought off of Amazon. I use, it, I use it for packaging like my signs and stuff that I ship, but I also use it anytime I use tie-dye or acrylic paints. So let's just play around. Let's start with the one I've got on top, which is gonna be my extra large, which honestly was the one that was kind of funky. So I think I've changed my mind, at least on this one. I think I may try and do like maybe the scrunch technique just because that big, huge spot on the back, like little splatter marks probably aren't going to fix that. So I think what I'm gonna do is do the scrunch technique. You guys have seen me do it in the bleaching. You've seen me do it in my tie dye. I'm just gonna kind of scrunch the whole thing up back here. Like so. Something like that. Making sure I have a lot of that uh, lighter image section so that I can make sure I, I spread it. Um, and this go around just because I already have it in a bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and use the SEI dye. This is in a charcoal color. Just make sure I shake it up real well. You always do a test spray, looks good. And then just go at it. I mean, I guess we'll see, right? Okay, so I posted something in the Facebook group the other day. It was really funny, and it kind of just goes to show exactly what's happening right now. And it's the four steps in crafting. And the first step is, hey, I got this. The second step is, oh, I don't got this. The third step is, what the heck is this? And then the fourth step is, yay, I did it. <laughs> so really, I think right now we're on that third step, and I'm really hoping that the fourth step, we're gonna be excited. So we'll see. Let's look and see. Um, Actually, that's kind of cool. What do you think? Different, different. Did I save the shirt? I don't know. I really don't know, you guys. I'd have to like really, I mean, maybe I could add some more spritz modes. I don't know, let's keep playing. This one might not be salvageable, but we're gonna try. <laughs> so again, with the spritz mode, I always fold in my image. So I'm gonna fold it into itself so that I don't get too much on the image section. It's okay if a little bit gets on there, but not too much. Folding it in. Go for the front. It's actually not horrible. And you know what it almost looks like? It almost looks like, like military army is kind of what it's turned into. I think I may still do some um, little spritzes. I think I might want some spritzes. So let's do that next. This is where it's gonna get messy. I should probably <laughs> have a paper towel ready. I'm just gonna dip my fingers in it, just like that, and then I'm gonna start flicking. <gasps> Ooh, I like that. I mean, I figured I did this with bleach, so why not with Acrylic paints. <gasps> Ooh, I like this. This is fun. Just gotta be really careful not to get this on my carpet. Okay, I like this a lot. This is fun. Too cute. And it's fun to do. Um, really fun, super cute. I can't wait to lift it up and show you, but my hands are a mess. So let me go grab um, you know, a paper towel or something. I'll be right back. Hang tight. Okay, I'm back. And let's look and see what we think. I think I like it, but sometimes you don't know until you pick the shirt up and like actually look at it. I think I like it. What do you guys think? I mean, I feel like I saved it. <laughs> it's kind of cool, huh? Let's do the back. Now keep in mind, I haven't sprayed the back yet and you can see some of it bled through the back like that dot. That's totally fine. 
that's part of this look. And I feel like the second you try and be too perfect, your shirt's gonna not be perfect. It's just not gonna be what you actually wanted. I'm just gonna do a little bit on the back. So fun, you guys. You guys have to try this. This is a lot of fun. Oh, I love it so much. So fun, it's like literally flicking paint. Ooh, I almost got some of my carpet. messy but it's fun okay is that water or is that paint water okay so then what you need to do is quickly grab a hanger and you're going to hang this up somewhere that it's not touching anything so that it will dry how cool i think i saved the shirt you guys yeah i think i saved it i mean i don't know you guys might comment and be like emma that's the most hideous shirt i've ever seen but based on the way it turned out, I wanted to do something to try and save it. It's kind of fun, huh? Something totally different. So yeah, I'm gonna go hang this up, let it dry completely. And then all you do is throw it in your dryer and you can do like a higher heat. It may shrink just a tad, but I usually do a high heat in my dryer for about 20 to 25, 30 minutes. Um, and that is enough to set this ink in this shirt. So then when you go to wash it the next time, it will only fade just slightly, but it will stay. Like all these black dots will 100% stay in that shirt. So kind of fun. I'm gonna go ahead and do it to, I don't know if I'm gonna do it to all of the shirts, but the shirts that, you know, got a little damaged from whatever was going out there in the garage. I'm gonna go ahead and get them all done and all dried so that I can salvage some of these shirts. Okay, on this one, this one is the medium one. I feel like this one was the second worst on the back again, so weird. Instead of doing this spray, I'm just gonna try and flick the whole thing and we'll see what we think about that. Okay, I'm gonna go wash this hand so that I can flip the shirt and do the front. Okie dokie. Let's flip the shirt. Oh, let me show you first before I flip it. Look how cute. I definitely like this better than the other shirt. It's so funny though, because the other shirt's drying and it kind of looks cool. I don't know, I'll show you the other shirt again. So there it is without the scrunch mode. This is just the flick mode with paint. And yes, some of it came through on the front, which is fine. Like you see a little spot by her head, but I think that like it, it's kind of the look that I'm going for on this shirt. I'm okay with it leaking through to the front. Okay, now for the front. So I think the other two shirts I'm going to leave because they were not as bad. So I've got my other hanger. I'll carefully hang this one up to dry. So cute, I think. What do you guys think? I think it's kind of fun. I need to turn my camera so you can see it better. There you go. What do you guys think? It's kind of fun, huh? I think I like it. Something different that I haven't tried before. And I think I was able to save these two shirts. I think somebody would want to wear these. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe not. Really quick, here's the two shirts together. I'm gonna show you the different methods. So this one had the scrunch technique and then the spritz with my fingers. Whereas this one just had the spritz technique. So side by side, that's what you'd be dealing with. There's the scrunch technique and spritz. There's just the spritz. And I'm talking the black, I'm not talking the bleach. So 
pretty cool, huh? I kind of like how they turned out. Definitely helps take away from that bright center part. Um, just tried to cover it up a little bit and I think it worked. I think it'll work. I'm gonna go um, probably in about two, three hours. I'll go ahead and I will throw these inside of the dryer. All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. So very interesting, so many things that I learned, but that's what my channel is for. I'm gonna be the one to try things out and bring it to you, tell you if they work, tell you if they don't work. And in this video, I don't have very many definitive answers. So make sure if you guys have tried anything similar and you know, share them in the comments below, join our Facebook group, again, MS Cottage DIY, and let's have a conversation. Let's discuss what are the best options. So as a quick review, what did we do today? We bleached inside of the garage. Um, we used a few different options. So the first option was the LED grow light that I got from Amazon. The other option was the heat lamp. It's 125 watts. And then the other option was nothing, just by itself. And I feel like all three of them, at least in the military green, the Heather military green, they all worked out fine. They all bleached fine. But as you guys saw from the rest of the video, we had some weird marks on the back of the shirts on some of them. Um, I had my cardboard boxes in between, so truly I cannot figure out where those marks came from, especially because I wiped down the counter. Um, my only thought process, again, is that maybe it didn't evaporate as quickly as if it was the sun, um, and I need to wipe it down with water and a washcloth. But I also want you guys to know, I didn't switch anything up. This is exactly how I do it outside. I wipe it down with um, a paper towel outside, and I've never, ever, ever had this problem. So kind of interesting. So again, we did like the accordion style, showed you guys how to do that, showed you how to do the center image. We pressed the image. Um, I was able to show you a quick tip and trick on how to use your infusible ink, just in case your, your uh, image from your sublimation print doesn't come out quite perfect. Then we were able to mix some of our own acrylic paint and we played with some spritz mode, splash mode. I don't know what you want to call it, but I used my fingers to do some speckles speckles maybe we should call it speckles mode to try and fix those other two shirts that had that weird design on the back and then we also used some SEI dye to try and get um, that scrunched or crumpled technique so I think we tried quite a few things today I think we were successful in some of the stuff we tried and we'll see if I can sell these oop shirts I don't know but at least I tried so please 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 make sure that you leave a comment below on what your experience has been if you have any tips and tricks for the rest of us um, as always thank you guys so much for watching I truly appreciate each and every one of you don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe the most important thing you guys don't forget to ring that bell so that you will get notified anytime that I upload a new video until next time we'll see you later friends